I would tell the patient that this test will be very helpful if you have an elevated blood count, especially if you have an elevated neutrophil count and or platelet count, because there are multiple reasons you can ha have the elevated blood count. It could be reactive due to benign conditions such as you recently had an infection, a bacterial infection, viral infection, or like if you have an inflammatory condition, or you recently took some medication that can transiently elevate your blood count. However, uh, there could be other more severe conditions uh, that is called a myeloproliferative neoplasm. In the short term we call it MPN, which is a chronic blood cancer. So if your clinician is suspecting that you might have an MPN, then he will order, he might order this test along with other tests to try to obtain a diagnosis. So uh, the CalR gene mutation was recently discovered to be the second most common mutation occurring in two types of MPN, ET and PMF. ET stands for essential thrombocythemia and P uh, PMF stands for primary myelofibrosis. In those two conditions, the most common mutation is JAK2, B617F, which account for about 50 to 60% of cases. And the second most common one is the CalR. Um, those two are the diagnostic molecular markers in M MPM for ET and PMF. So therefore, your clinician might want to order them at the same time or he or she might try to order the first one, the JAK2, the more common one first, and to see whether that one is positive or not. If not, then he might add in the CalR testing. Uh, this test can be easily done on peripheral blood sample after simple blood drawn, or it can be performed on bone marrow specimen if your doctor had performed the bone marrow biopsy. When the result come out, the pathologist getting the report will then correlate the molecular finding with the bone marrow morphologic findings and communicate with your clinician. And your clinician will then put everything together to make the final diagnosis and use that information to decide the treatment options, to treat or not. CalR test result carries both diagnostic and prognostic values. A positive CalR test result provide molecular evidence that there is a myeloid clone neoplastic myeloid clone present that will help the clinician and pathologist making a diagnosis of MPN. And it's especially helpful in those situations when there's a ambiguous etiology for thrombosis or when the bone marrow morphologic feature for MPN is very subtle, very equivocal, and or there is unexplained reticulum fibrosis. Also, um, CalR mutation is not found in polycythemia vera so when you have a CalR positive test, that helps you rule out that possibility. Um, prognostic wise, as I have mentioned earlier, for PMF patient who carries the CalR mutation, they have better overall survival. Whereas the triple negative patients, negative for CalR, uh, JAK2 and MIPO, they have worse prognosis. In ET, CalR patient, they have lower risk of thrombosis. It is important to point out that um, a positive CalR mutation does not give you a specific, does not tell you the specific type of MPN that you have, because by itself it does not tell you whether it's ET or PMF. So in all the cases, clinical pathologic correlation is needed. Um, also, um, CalR mutation has been reported at lower frequency in other myeloid conditions like MDS, like CMML, like atypical CML, and also in RARST. Uh, at the same time, inactive CalR test result does not exclude AMPM because as we have mentioned, it, it can be positive for other molecular markers or it can carry none of the three markers we have discussed. We um, at Mayo Clinic, we do have a test utilization algorithm that would guide people through the ancillary test ordering. And it is available on the MML website for your reference. So the take home message is if you're suspecting ET or PMF, you should start with the jak 2 b 617 f And if that's negative, then you should order CalR. If CalR is negative, go to MIPO testing. Uh, however, if you're suspecting polycythemia vera instead, 
Start with Jack 2 B617F because it is in, uh, it is positive in about 95% of PV patients. Um, if it's negative, uh, you're still suspecting PV, then you should order the Jack 2 Exxon 12 sequencing instead.